I don't know if the Los Angeles Rams are going to win anything this season. Because Cooper Cup is already injured in camp and the Rams are likely going to be terrible again. I think that under on the Rams is one of the best bets on the board. Um, uh, currently, I see it at six and a half. This Los Angeles Rams team's early success might be shocking the world, but I am humbly and happily excited to announce to the world that I am not shocked whatsoever. Week one, Lumen Field, the Los Angeles Rams coming in with a point to prove, did more than just get a W against the Seattle Seahawks. They straight up embarrassed grown men with families and mortgages on national television. Under 200 yards of total offense, for this NFC Championship threatening Geno Smith and Seattle Seahawks offense, kind of crazy. Now, on the offensive side of the LA Rams, this team has a lot of unrecognizable faces from their Super Bowl winning squad a couple of years ago. But man, did those young Rams stars step up to the plate to get the recognition that they deserve. Tyron Williams, two rushing touchdowns. Cam Akers, he is out of the house. He is in Minnesota now. We move on to Tyron Williams, their young back. Now, I've got to give a shout out to these young receivers. Puka Nukua out of BYU and Tutu Atwell. Not exactly household names yet, right? But together, 238 receiving yards split right down the middle, 119 apiece. That's making a statement. On the other side, Geno Smith was at the helm for Seattle. Other than that early connection to DK Metcalf, it was a pretty silent performance. Less than 200 yards for an entire offense. That Rams defense had them looking more like a JV squad. And speaking of defense, let's not skip over the king himself, Aaron Donald. After an off year in 2022, playing only 11 games with just five sacks, week one, dominant. Three pressures, a pass rush grade north of 90. That's the Aaron Donald the NFL knows and quite frankly, fears. Let's zero in on a player who not only caught my eye, but literally caught the eyes of every NFL fan. Puka Nakua, this kid, a fifth rounder, out of BYU, not a first rounder, not a second rounder, a fifth. And what's he do? He steps up big time with Cooper Cup sideline. Now, the first ball that comes his way, a drop. Happens, rookie, we get it. But what's the mark of a true player in this league? It's not how you start, it's about how you respond. And Nakua, he responded with 15 targets, 10 catches, 119 yards. That's not just being involved into an offense. That's being the offense. We're talking about a target share of 41%. Let that sink in. Stafford looked his way almost every other pass. And in moments where you might expect a rookie to fail, Nakua stood tall, acting as if he had been in the NFL for five years at this point. But for those that don't know about Puka Nakua, let's give a brief background of his BYU days. When you dive into the books, you'll find out that he's been doing this for a very long time. 2021 rolls around and he's leading the Cougars in receiving yards and he does it again in 2022. Injuries, sure, they hit him, but did they stop him? No, he chalked up 48 catches for 625 yards and five touchdowns in 2022. But when we flash back to 2021, the numbers are even better. 805 yards off of 43 grabs and six touchdowns in the end zone. And guys, the kid wasn't just catching, he was moving nearly 19 yards per reception in 2021. 834 all-purpose yards in 2022 in just nine games with 10 touchdowns. And in seven of those games, he recorded over 100 yards receiving. You put him on the field to produce. He's one of those guys. But here's the thing. He's not just a receiver. The man took handoffs to 39 carries, 357 yards, five touchdowns on the ground. All I'm saying is if you didn't know Puka Nakua before, you better learn his name now. The kid's got a bright future ahead of him. But we got to talk about the most important man on this offense, and that is John Matthew Stafford. What happened to Matthew Stafford? Let's get some context. Yes, 2022 rough. We get it. Maybe one of his toughest seasons to date. Just 10 touchdowns and 8 interceptions in 9 games. And look, I get it. The O-line was a revolving door, and the man's elbow looked like it went 12 rounds with a heavyweight. But, and it's a big but, let's pump the brakes on the doom and gloom. Remember 2021? The man was dealing. Took the Rams all the way to the Super Bowl. Fast forward to now... And it's starting to feel like a little bit of deja vu. And the best way for me to kind of prove my argument, let's go into stats. Next Gen Stats is telling me something interesting. Stafford's back to being Stafford. He's ranking ninth in the NFL in intended air yards at 8.3. Now you might say, Miles, what does that even mean? Simply put, he's chucking the ball down the field on average of 8.3 yards every time he throws. Last year, that number was down at 6.7. Fifth lowest. Feels like he had an arm tied behind his back. But 2021, now that was peak Stafford, averaging 8.7 this year. Last year, 
a measly 4.7, but again in 21, 6.8. See the trend? He's getting right back into the form he was in 2021. And if you're looking for a quarterback who isn't afraid to throw deep, Stafford's your guy. No one, and I mean no one, has attempted more throws of at least 10 yards than Stafford this season. 31 attempts, and those 20-yard bombs, he's tied for six most in the league. Let's factor in that Stafford is getting more time in the pocket this year. Remember 2022? Quick passes, a lot of pressure. It's like trying to cook a gourmet meal in five minutes. This year, Chef Stafford has time to simmer and stew and cook up his opponent. Let's not forget, he's doing all this without Cooper Cup. One of his favorite and most trusted targets. Sure, Cup isn't going 70 yards downfield every play, but he can stretch defenses. The bottom line is, two games in, Stafford's looking pretty comfy. He's settled, he's confident, and this Rams offense is ready to explode, so buckle up. We are getting what looks like Vintage Stafford vibes. If you are sleeping under a rock and you do not know that Cam Akers has been traded to Minnesota, so that means that Kyron Williams is the starting running back for the Los Angeles Rams. Now, Kyron Williams, not exactly top of the headlines last year, but this season, he's turning those LA lights even brighter. Four touchdowns, 154 yards from scrimmage. These statistics that I'm about to push on about Kyron Williams, I want you all to listen very, very closely. The guys all over Pro Football Focus, PFF, they've got him pinned with a rushing grade of 79.7. That's top 10 territory. This guy's breaking tackles, fighting for those extra yards, 77 of them after contact to be exact. But here's where things get a little bit wild. Despite everything Williams is doing on the ground, defenses aren't giving him his due respect. Once again, thanks to Next Gen Stats, here's a fun fact for you. Kyron Williams hasn't faced a single stacked box this season, not one. So let's talk numbers with Cam Akers. Week one, 44.44% of his rushing attempts were against a stacked box. That's second most in the league. Ladies and gentlemen, clearly the Seahawks had one guy on their radar and it wasn't Kyron Williams. They were putting their chips on stopping Cam Akers, leaving Williams with more open ground. The plot twist, while Akers may have the name recognition and the reps, it's Kyron Williams who's been capitalizing on his opportunities. I'm not saying Akers is a bust, but the game plan and defensive focus definitely made his life tougher out there. So the question is, is can the Rams offense continue to flourish as the defense continues to not respect Kyron Williams and just simply allows him to tear up the ground game? I don't know, but... Rams fans, let me know what you think of your team in the comments. I want to leave you with this. I believe that there are four pillars of this Los Angeles Rams team, maybe five, maybe a little bit more. We all know of the top three, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Aaron Donald. And this fourth pillar, everyone kept forgetting, Sean McVay went to Super Bowl in 2021, has an off year in 2022, and all of a sudden, the Rams are bad. The Rams are done. The Rams are garbage. The Rams are joke. I kept telling my friends and everyone that I knew, I am not a Rams fan, everybody listening. I am not a Rams fan, but understanding that they had a future Hall of Fame head coach still along with three Hall of Fame players, understanding that there are teams that have playoff implications that have not one Hall of Famer on their entire roster or staff. That is stupid. The Los Angeles Rams have four potential Hall of Famers. I'm going to take that to the bank that they make a playoff push. This is not hard to believe. Like, comment, and subscribe.